Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up guys? So welcome to your readings for February 2019. I want to wish all of my Aquarians out there a very happy birthday. We are officially in Aquarius season as far as Western astrology is concerned. Uh, I also want to wish you guys a happy Valentine's Day, maybe, if you're doing anything, if you're celebrating. I hope you have a great one. And if you're not such a fan, then forget I even said that, right? Right? <laughs> so these are general readings, okay? Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, go ahead and send me an email, divineconversations2711 at gmail.com. All of the readings that I offer are listed in the description box below. So go ahead and check that out and read through those. See if you, whichever one you would like and then shoot me an email. If you can't decide, then still email me and we can discuss the situation a little bit and I will help you pick out the best reading to move forward with, yeah? We are using the Golden Universal Tarot for the readings with the Oracle of the uh, Unicorns, hee hee hee, for a little bit of Oracle guidance, yeah? Um, uh, just one thing that I want to mention about the readings. I recommend that people watch the uh, the, the Leo reading and the Capricorn reading. Leo, because we just had that super blood moon eclipse on the 20th of sep uh, September, no, January, excuse me. I don't know why I said September, but um, the 20th of January. And depending on like, say if Leo was a, is, is a big thing in your chart, sun, moon, rising, or Venus or whatever, or depending on what house Leo is in for you, you could get some good insight as to what may have happened uh, around or what may be shifting around that full moon that we had, the super blood moon eclipse. The Capricorn video, I also recommend that people watch, uh, re regardless if you have Capricorn in a major placement, as a major placement like Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. You, with that one, you may also want to look into where Capricorn may be, what house it may be in in your chart. For some reason, there was just a lot of major collective energy that was coming through, at least in the very beginning of that reading. So I recommend that maybe if you're interested, if, there, if that's piqued your interest, if you resonate with that a little bit, to go ahead and watch that reading, yeah? If you are in the New York City metro area, come through and see me every Friday at Om Shanti Bookshop. I am there doing in-person readings from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. The link to their website is in the description box below. Go ahead and check their, uh, check their website out. You can give them a call and schedule a reading in advance with me or any of the other fantastic readers there. We have astrologers, palm readers, tarot and oracle card readers like myself, and we're all really good at what we do. <laughs> yeah. They also have a really excellent crystal selection, a card selection between tarot and oracle cards. They do have a nice book selection, uh, essential oils, incense, sage, palo santo, anything that you might want. I'm pretty sure Om Shanti has it. Yes. And they do ship locally or oh, well, remotely. They do ship their, their, um, uh, uh, they can ship things. <laughs> Go ahead and give them a call. If you like, you can make it a, an order over the phone or you can do it online. Yes. And finally, I am on Instagram and um, Facebook. You can go ahead and follow me there. The links are in the description box below. Okay. So I think that's it. Yeah. So without further ado, let's get to it, guys. Hello, Pisces. Welcome to your reading for February 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get into it, shall we? <laughs> Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all or for all involved for February 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Pisces, I'm not going to lie. When I started channeling your energies, I got a little sad. And what I'm hearing is deep sorrow. For some of you, for some of you, you are very much picking up on the collective energies here, okay? Um, and so it's like you're mourning the pain and the heartbreak for others, all right? And for others of you, you are dealing with your own pain and your own heartbreak. But I don't necessarily feel like it's anything 
new, okay? These are some things that are deep in ancestry, Spirit is saying. Um, for some of you, this could strictly be the fact that, you know, we're coming up on Valentine's Day and you may not necessarily have a Valentine or you're not with, like, say, your twin flame because as I was doing the pre-shuffle, the King of Cups and the uh, the Page of Cups, which to me symbolizes your energy in certain circumstances, and also the Lovers came out. So... You know, there could be a bit of sorrow because you're not with your twin flame or you're not with your perceived soulmate. That doesn't necessarily mean they're just not in your life. For some of you, I feel like, or I'm picking up on the fact that they're just not physically around. Maybe you're off on business. Maybe they're off on business. For some of you, I am picking up specifically that your, like say your twin flame or um, your soulmate, your partner or whatever, um, your person is like in the military or in the army, or, like in the armed forces somehow, and they've on, they're on deployment. And especially since we're coming up into your birthday season soon, um, well, we are coming up on your birthday season at the end of February when it in terms of uh, Western astrology, um, and the fact that they're just probably not around um, and not, are are not most likely not going to be around is a little bit of a, a case for sorrow for you. But for others of you, there's just this deep sadness, this deep sorrow that's coming forward. And I do feel like a lot of you are purging ancestral energy. All right, Pisces? But also, you guys, I mean, like, you're the end of the zodiac. You're very much, your, your archetype is very much uh, focused on the collective. So I do feel like a lot of you, a lot of you are picking up on collective energies right now and are doing some deep purging um, on behalf of the collective. And you could be a part of that as well, like your personal journey, because you know we're all connected. And so you're most likely connecting with others that have had similar situations to yours. All right, Pisces? I'm going to give you one more shuffle, and then we're going to get into it. Okay, there we go. Let's cut the deck. Boop. All right, Pisces. Overall energy. What do we have for you? Ah, the Ten of Pentacles. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get the cards together. Okay. The Ten of Pentacles. So for some of you, um, you know, for some of you, there's a big family focus, um, longevity, putting the time and the effort into something, trying to work on your financial situation. So for some of you, this deep sorrow could have something to do with finances. Um, there has been a lot of energy, especially leading up to the, the solar, I'm sorry, the full moon um, in Leo, which also was a, a, a full lunar eclipse, excuse me. Um, there have been a lot of energies surrounding purging lack mentality. And I do feel like Pisces, many of you are picking up on that um, on behalf of the collective, but then also on behalf of yourself. So that could be some of the things from your lineage, your ancestry, um, even your immediate family, you know, like dating back to maybe as close to your own mother and father or even your grandparents. That really is something that is being purged, being felt, being um, reconstituted, really. Okay. Uh, for some of you, there are financial woes or for some of you, you're working on your finances. You're working on your career. I do see that some of you are looking for... Um, greater longevity, but also greater fulfillment and greater happiness in your financial situation, in your career pursuits. Sorry, guys, my lips are chapped. So uh, it's through this sorrow, this disappointment that you're feeling that I'm picking up on for you that is actually helping influence you to move in a different direction, okay? You ha Ooh, you have the Five of Swords. And what honestly, what I'm getting here is that ancestral energy. Um, the lack mentality, even though it's not the Five of Pentacles, it's the Five of Swords. But why I'm feeling it's coming out as the Five of Swords is um, that... You know, it's dis it's it's a disservice. It's detrimental not only to the individual that's embodying it, but to everyone else around them because it uh, kind of like spreads like a disease or like wildfire within the collective. Um, 
and humanity being so three-dimensionally rooted for such a long time, you know, for these last couple centuries, this cycle within the human existence, we've been very focused on the, the physical, have been consciously disconnected from the spiritual for quite a while. And so these feelings of um, uh, impoverishedness or not having enough, lack mentality and all that, these vows of poverty, are deeply, deeply rooted, deeply ingrained, and it's like an uphill battle having to deal with this. For others of you, there is some fighting going on within your family situation, whether that be immediate family, maybe you're picking up on that from others, um, oof, and you could be dealing with that. Now, with that said, you do have temperance. You could be dealing with a Sagittarian, but again, we're not. I, I, I'm not trying to get into you know the specific uh, extra signs here. I'm really just trying to read the messages in the cards for you. So temperance is about balance. Is about a new form of alchemy, and this actually falls right in line with what I was saying about this lack of mentality that's being purged. We are show, we are getting a new template here, and we're balancing that out. You Pisces could be on the forefront of feeling this because you are pretty apt. Or, or yeah, you have a knack for picking up on collective energies. So it's almost as if you are an agent of change, you are trying to help transmute. And then you have the moon here. Could be dealing with some some Cancerian energy. For some of you, you could have a Sagittarius in your chart. For others of you, you could have uh, the uh, Cancer in your chart. For some of you, you might have both, <laughs> okay? Um, but illusion, fear, seeing through the illusion, seeing how this lack mentality or this self-defeating energy is causing problems, seeing through that illusion and breaking yourself away from it, breaking yourself free from it. This is also about intuition, says the moon. Um, so some of you are starting to really pick up on these energies for the collective because you're becoming more and more in tune with your psychic abilities. Your empathic nature is opening up. And through that, you have a new form of alchemy that's coming into play here with temperance, you're balancing these things out. This could be a little bit of a struggle, all right? Especially with this five of swords energy here. But ultimately it is a good thing because you're becoming more of an authentic version of yourself. You become, you're, you're, you're connecting with yourself on a deeper level here. All right, first set of energies. This first row here, this is going to be the current energy surrounding you moving into the month of February. The second row is going to be upcoming energies throughout the month. First set of surrounding energies for you moving into February, Pisces. Hello, we've got the Queen of Cups. This could be you, could also be a Cancerian. There either is a Cancerian in your life for some of you, or you have Cancer in your chart. The moon, is, uh, the moon rules Cancer. So the moon is not uh, actually... Yeah, you could see the moon as a Pisces card as well. But officially, your card, Pisces, is in the major arcana is the hanged man. But I do consider, I, I do see somewhat of a Cancerian energy when the moon comes out because the moon does rule Cancer. But then also the archetype of Cancer is embodied within the Queen of Pentacles, cardinal energy, empathic, all that good stuff. But it could also be... Um, any other water sign, Scorpio or you, Pisces, all right? So this could speak to you. But someone here is really getting into their empathic nature, is really a t opening up to their psychic abilities, um, and also could really be working on their own emotional stability. Um, some of you might be getting into divination. I am seeing the, the figure, this, the woman in this card is like looking into her cup and most like usually, you know, the Queen of Cups is depicted as looking right into her, her cup, but you could see that as a form of divination, looking into like water as like a mirror or like a, a, a portal to see through other things, okay? Uh, uh, some of you are very much, uh, uh, very much getting in tune with your emotions here or embodying this empathic, compassionate, com uh, unconditionally loving archetype. The Queen of Pentacles is coupled with, woo, there you go. There's that lack mentality, the Five of Pentacles. You see, I was picking up on it, but it was coming through as the Five of Swords before because it's self-defeating. It really is. It is a lose-lose situation for everybody. So this is what I was picking up for you. The sorrow surrounding this Five of Pentacles energy, lack mentality, feeling left out in the cold, feeling abandoned, feeling rejected, all of that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Many of you are very much picking up on this energy for the collective. So if there, for those of you out there that are picking up on this energy and you don't really know where it's coming from because you're like, no, this isn't me. I, I have no reason to feel this way. Why am I feeling this way? It's the collective, okay? 
Second set of surrounding energies for you, Pisces, you've got the Eight of Wands, 11-11 on the counter. You've got the Eight of Wands. This is quick movement, but this is also communication here. Um, for some of you, I am seeing that um, if you're having family issues, some of you are feeling left out in the cold by them, feeling rejected. Um, and I, with the Eight of Wands here, I do feel like you want to communicate or maybe others want to communicate with you. I'm picking up two different things here. Either you're wanting to communicate with them to try and make it better, but don't fall back into that same role that you were playing that helped you feel like you were, in, you were less than, that helped you feel rejected. Don't go back into that role. It's self-defeating. It's defeating on all gra on all, from all positions with the Five of Swords here. For others of you, there could be some individuals potentially in your family, it doesn't have to be, it could be a job, um, and family could be blood or it could be like a, a close circle of friends. Those, for, for whoever, whomever, was made to feel left out in this situation, lacking or less than. There could be some communication that wants to come in from these opposing parties, but keep in mind, it could just be some of the same old, same old with the Five of Swords here. For some Pisces, this could be an energy for you of just being empathic and all that, but and ending up being a doormat to narcissists. And um, I, I, I don't entertain that. Do not entertain that, okay? Eight of Wands is coupled with, yep, look at that, Nine of Swords. Some of you do want to communicate, but you're, in, you're feeling anxious about it. Some others may want to communicate with you, but because of the fights that may have ensued here, because of the negative, nasty energy represented by this Five of Swords here, they may feel like they can't communicate. And it may very well be that way because of how they may have treated you or how you may have treated them, all right? Your challenge in these, uh, uh, your challenge for this first row here, you have the Seven of Swords. Getting past this deception, seeing through the deception. Like I said, for some of you, there are some energies here. There are some people that may want to come back and start communicating with you again, acting as if everything is all good and fine. It's all hunky dory, and you know you're going to turn over a new leaf, and everything's going to be fine. Only to turn around and find out that they're pulling the same bullshit they did last time. Okay, your challenge here, Pisces, is to come into a greater alignment with yourself, either you, Pisces, or the other person. Your challenge here is to come into a deeper alignment with yourself, really open up to those empathic abilities that you have, and see through the illusion. Okay, Seven of Swords is coupled with, what did I just say? The King of Swords. Now, the King of Swords is different from the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is no bullshit. No time for it. No patience for it. Not even going to entertain it. The King of Swords, however, is very diplomatic. He'll at least he'll at least hear you out. You see how he's positioned here with his sword is up, but it's slightly to the side. Like, and it's almost he's saying like, "All right, cool, take your best shot. Plead your case. I'll hear you out. I've probably already made my decision," he says in the back of his head. But I'll hear you out. Okay, you have to be discerning. Now, you could also be dealing, you could be dealing with an, uh, an Aquarian, a um, uh, 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 Gemini, or a Libra, potentially really an Aquarian because the Aquarius, Aquarius is the fixed archetype within the air signs and um, the king of kings are the fixed signs, but it could be any. It doesn't ha even have to be an air sign. It could just be a really difficult person in your life, overly logical, maybe very cutthroat, um, very just a, a difficult energy to deal with always has something to say and is not necessarily going to say anything really nice may not even be very truthful about it maybe the type of energy that just wants to hurt people just for whatever for shits and giggles or whatever complex they have going on all right you your challenge is to see through this energy because I really do not feel like they're being honest here especially with the seven of swords I don't feel like they're being honest this could be you Pisces or it could be the other person but hey you never know this is a general reading. Closing message for this first set of surrounding energies for you, Pisces. You've got the Ace of Cups. Reconciliation, sure, but the Ace of Cups is first a symbol of divine love and self-love than anything else. All right? So you're having to find the self-respect to really move away from this situation. 
to show yourself divine love by removing yourself from this because this just feels like a ton of icky energy icky icky energy love yourself enough to separate from this situation ace of cups is coupled with the knight of pentacles so there could be someone also there could be someone trying to come through to show you love and it's moving pretty slowly i'll be, uh, you know i mean the knight of pentacles is the slowest moving knight in the deck so this really is could be a pretty slow moving energy you also could be working diligently um, and taking it step by step in rebuilding your sense of self-love should you be dealing with some sort of fighting energy. All right. Now, uh, looking forward through the month of February, the, uh, the upcoming energies for February, first set of surrounding energies in that line, we have the Empress. Well, that's beautiful. So this is abundance. This could be pregnancy. Um, and uh, this is the Divine Feminine archetype here. Believe in yourself is what really stands out here with the Empress. Love yourself the way the Divine Mother loves you. And that's unconditionally. All right. Embodying more of this unconditional love, especially with the Queen of Cups here. Uh, above the Empress. The Empress is coupled with death. Yep. So if something is coming to an end for you, understand that you are abundant. You have the abundance of the universe at your disposal, okay? Um, this is also calling for you to rise up in your own feminine energies, in your own embodiment of the divine feminine, and bring some sort of transformation into your life. This is also abundance through transformation. So should you be going through a major transformation to, like towards the end of the month or something like that, at some point in the month, there is quite an abundant energy surrounding it. That's actually, when you think about it, the Empress with, the, with death is actually a very, very strong combination. Because as the transition happens, what I'm seeing is as the transition is happening, it's like it's being infused with all this loving, compassionate, divine, feminine, um, abundant energy, which basically is giving it full reign to be something amazing, like truly, truly phenomenal. There could be pregnancy involved. There could be... I, I hate to say it, but there could be a miscarriage involved. And if that's the case, my condolences go out to you. That is never an easy thing to deal with. But what I'm also getting is like the rise of the divine feminine energies is creating a major change for you or someone you're connected with. Your second set of surrounding energies in the upcoming energies for the month of February, you have, ah, look, there you are, Page of Cups. Now, some of you actually could be getting pregnant and, and it's not that you're having a miscarriage, but it's that your life is changing because of it. Naturally, your life would change um, uh, by having a child. And this could be that child coming through here with the Page of Cups. It could be a reconciliatory energy too, because uh, I am hearing I'm sorry coming from this card. So someone could be trying to make up, uh, reconcile, Put aside our differences is what I heard specifically. Page of Cups is coupled with. Woo, justice. You could be dealing with a Libra. Um, so actually, some justice could be served here in somebody apologizing, in trying to make amends. I do feel like whoever here would be on the receiving side of the apology um, definitely did glow, and I mean G-L-O-W, glow up. Um, whatever happened in the past that they've been moving away from, that they've been healing from, that they've been transmuting or balancing out of, has really given them a rise. And I'm hearing the rise of the Divine Feminine again. So this really could be a Divine Feminine energy that is um, reshaping his or her life and transforming through that. And what I see here for some of you is that your own personal transformation 
could influence someone to either say they're sorry, like try to make amends, or uh, influence them to feel regret or remorse in which they would ne feel the need to apologize here, okay? And, that, and that's that justice that brings. Now, um, be careful because someone could just be opportunistic in this sense and trying to hone in on something, you know, trying to get a piece of your pie when they rejected you to begin with, you know what I mean? So be cautious with that. Now, for others of you, if we are talking pregnancy here, you could have been trying to get pregnant for some time. And so now justice is being served and you're finally reaching that. And if that's the case, congratulations. Now, to the other end, on the flip side of that, if you, in fact, if someone around you has had a miscarriage, um, it's some sort of balance here that I'm feeling and I'm trying to I'm trying to put this into words like what it is I'm actually feeling but there's a there's a balance being stricken here maybe you could get another opportunity in the future that would be successful maybe the situation just wasn't quite right this time it was imbalanced in some way hmm Either way, guys, justice, be, justice is being served. Um, and if you want to talk signs, we could be dealing, you could be dealing with a Scorpio with death or you could be dealing with a Libra with uh, justice. And uh, if not, then you could have any one of those signs in your chart, okay? Your challenge in the upcoming energies, Pisces, you have, ooh, we, the King of Cups. Here's that counterpart, okay? You have the Queen of Cups and now you have the King of Cups. So... This really could be that person that's trying to come back to get into your life. They could be manipulative, emotionally manipulative. They could be a narcissist. And now, and this could absolutely be that person that left you out in the cold or left whoever out in the cold with the five of pentacles and the queen of cups. But now that they see that you have risen above you have transformed, you've gone through a major transformation. Now it's as if they want to come back with their tail between their legs. And it's like, ha, huh, you're cute, but I don't think so. Where were you when I needed you? Type of energy. King of Cups is coupled with the Nine of Wands. This could either be this Nine of Wands, or this could be the King, this King of Cups figure coming forward and being all battered and bruised and just trying to persevere and trying to say they're sorry. But it could also be you defending yourself against this King of Cups energy. Needing to, and I and I mean needing to. And I was picking up an energy of, for some of you, this could be someone that's just tr being opportunistic here. And it's like, absolutely not. Get the fuck out of here. Even though you may still really love this person. And this is why it could be a challenge. Because you really could still love this person, but you're having to keep your walls up. You're needing to stay defensive. At least until they show you something different. Until they can show and prove. You know what I mean? Like, any, I still feel like that's going to be a hard sell. Like, it's going to take a long time and a lot of effort to really get you to start to tear down, take down these walls and really open up to this person again. Okay? Your closing message here for the end, the end of the month, potentially, or your final outcome, you've got the Queen of Swords. Wowie, wow, wow. You've got the counterparts in the cups and you've got the counterparts in the, um, in the swords. Okay, but this is the embodiment of the Queen of Swords archetype and this. So what I'm picking up on here is definitely a feminine masculine dynamic. All right. Um, and now whoever. Whoever. So this is the same person that was um, uh, represented here by the Queen of Cups. And now you're like, oh, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. You're seeing right through the bullshit and you're cutting it out. Or at least you're needing to. Okay? Queen of Swords is coupled with the Nine of Cups. But ultimately, there's some sort of wish fulfillment. When you truly set your boundaries and, like, don't take any shit from anybody, it's going to help you bring in 
your wish fulfillment. For some of you, this is a pretty specific message, but I am picking up some sort of um, indulging in the pleasures of life. Um, and this could be because you don't like having to be in this Queen of Swords energy, but you're needing to nonetheless. That's a really specific message for someone out there. Um, but ultimately, I am seeing that the Queen of Swords energy is going, the Queen of Swords, Swords archetype is going to help you manifest your desires. Either you're cutting somebody out and that's giving them, or that's giving the universe the space to bring someone new in for you, someone better suited, or by you standing your ground and <laughs> I heard showing no mercy, which is very much, which is very much um, a queen of swords type of situation, whether she's uh, positively or negatively um, aspected, she is very much a no mercy type of energy. Um, but in you standing your ground, in you honoring yourself and saying, no, I will not accept crumbs from anyone, especially not you, you could be potentially influencing this person to show up, to grow up, to, to, to mature and be that wish fulfillment that you're looking for. Of course, you would need to let go of all types of expectation. Cut it, cut it out and just move on with your life. Don't cut it out with intentions of saying, well, I'm going to teach you a lesson. No. I'm cutting you out because you need to, I, I know it's going to make you learn. No, don't even worry about that. Just cut it out because it does not serve you. That's all the Queen of Swords cares about. Anything else would be a, a waste of time. All right? So let's get into your Oracle guidance for the month of February here, Pisces. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, here we go. Best message, please, Spirit, for all the Pisceans out there. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. There it is. Celebration. Okay. Underneath the deck, you have friendship. Seek out, so, seek out your soul family. Surround yourself with positive people. Spend more time socializing. And this would be spend more time socializing with people that are of a high vibration that help you stay elevated. Yes? Celebration. A positive outcome is assured. Celebrate your success. Enjoy your achievements. And that is absolutely something that came through here with the Queen of Swords and the Nine of Cups at the end of the month or towards the end of the month or whatever. All right, Pisces. So there it is. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I'm wishing you guys a great February and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah, take care. Mwah. Bye.